beautiful Pisces friends and welcome to your horoscope for September of 2020 where we've got a full moon happening in your sign this month. We've got a new moon happening just opposite your energy which is going to point us into relationships a little bit this month but more so than anything Pisces I think that these moons are actually speaking up about the fact that majority of the planets this month are in the eastern sector or to the left of your chart which is very much so speaking to your personal independence this month i don't think that you're pushing so hard in relationships more so about what you are in relation to whether that be the world whether it be things that you are passionate about because this is a month where pisces you are pushing and it's like pisces is trying to have it their way you want what you want this month and you are moving your life and your world in the direction of the things that you desire now your desire energy may zhuzh out just a little bit because mars is going to go retrograde this month in the energy of aries and this actually is going to be happening in the second house for you so it may slow down the area of finances a little bit for you or what it does even better i think is one make you take a real evaluation of that particular area of your life but also the evaluation is are you putting your energy into your life in the best way to make money and to have value to have things in your life that you value so i'll talk about all of that in just a minute okay before we get in here the autumn equinox appointments are up so you can take advantage of that special it's in the description box down below or you can come to stormygrace.com as well in the eat and greets this month fellow youtuber adam Ch adam Athen Chimenti will be here to talk about true sidereal astrology. Gary Caton will be back. We're going to get ready for Mercury Retrograde. Michael Bryan, Becca Tarnas, Achuta Bhava will be here. And people are lined up until the end of the year. And I'm telling you, there are some beautiful astrology practitioners coming over. So I hope you're enjoying the eat and greets. Come sit, come learn with us, watch back through the playlist. And if you just can't even... Right now, with all of these ads, it's a political season, my friends. There are ads from the lotion peoples, the gummy bears, and politics just going crazy on YouTube right now. So have compassion on your creators. But if you just can't with the ads right now, I understand. The eat and greets can also be found on my podcast, and that is in the description box down below as well, okay? All right, you guys, let's jump in and break this month down. At the beginning of the month on the second or first depending on where you are we've got this full moon happening in your sign the full moon says that something needs to be ended acknowledged or adjusted so for you pisces we're looking at you where do you need to put you down right or where do you need to pick you back up this is really an energy that i think of as this moon it says pisces where are you suffering because you're not in service in the right relation to yourself have you been thinking more about other people or putting too much energy in over there and it's not been about what do you like what do you love what do you enjoy where do you need to surrender to win here Pisces that is the question I would ask you at this particular moon okay on the fifth we've got Mercury moving into the energy of Libra this is going to light up your eighth house space now Mercury in Libra is wonderful for diplomatic conversations it's wonderful you've got things maybe you want to get done this month maybe even your spouse or your partner is just having like a miracle month in terms of the finances or joint connection in some way but what's happening here is mercury is making you very diplomatic in your conversation in your decision making you're very balanced i told you this is a month even though libra is a partnership energy it's about relation what are you in relation to this month because you are really i think being called back home to pisces back to what pisces is interested in back to these soul practices but there are other people out there so how do you do you but also be in right relation to that the other thing is is i think truly how pisces are you relating to the influence of all of the energy that is going on right now 
there's a lot going out there, going on out there with our fellow human beings and how are you relating to that? These are the kind of questions that I think are posed to you as Mercury is in Libra. I think these are the kind of conversations that you have. Maybe this is even you're having conversations because you're going back to that astrology study or you're just surrendering here and saying, I like this. I'm interested in this. I'm going to just give myself to it. And then you are able to develop the skills that are needed over here in this eighth house place but it does require a surrender to win take that with you this month okay on the sixth we see venus entering into the energy of leo now considering this leo energy for you i do love that venus is a benefic energy so she's usually usually trying to draw something very positive to us in this particular area um in the energy of leo it's like i want to shine my heart i want to share this so in your day-to-day -day living which is what happens in the sixth house you're health, day-to-day -day living, mundane things, service to other people, your job, brushing your teeth, all of the mundane things kind of live in the sixth house space. I would ask you where Venus is giving you permission or showing you, guiding you, opening that invitation for you to just open up to enjoy every day and enjoy it because you are surrendering to win. You're like, you know what? I'm really into watercolors. I'm going to do that. I'm really into planting vegetables with the hope that, you know, my local community will catch on to this. I'm into nurturing. I'm into my spiritual life. Whatever it is, I think Venus infuses you with this sense of invitation to joy in this area. Now, your sixth house will get a couple aspects this month that I think are a little bit challenging to it. So I would tell you, pay attention to your health, but nothing that I think needs you to go crazy or anything like that. It's more so like if you're getting yourself super tired out, if you're not hydrated, if you're not resting or getting the downtime that you need this month, you could see that there's this feels like there's this ebb and flow in your energy. So, you know, to the best of your ability, be as balanced in that way as you can. But ultimately, too, Venus is trying to pull goodness to pull value in so at a very mundane level here as well this could be that venus offers you up a new project or a new opportunity to work on something with people as a project but it would really be the question of what do you have to offer here what value can you also bring of your own special sauce to this particular project, okay? Ooh, if you've got drama with coworkers, Venus is good for that as well, to, to bring, not drama, to bring some diplomacy to it. On the 9th, we see Mars stepping into that retrograde at 28 degrees of Aries, and he will finish out at 15 degrees of Aries. So check that in your chart, okay? Now, again, this is in your second house, which I think is valuable because it makes you slow down. Mars is our human doing, but we're going, going, going. It's very energetic, right? So he asks you to slow down in a retrograde and go back over your finances. Go back over your skills and your talents. Go back over your self-esteem. Man, Pisces, this year, it's 2020, we've all been experiencing it, not that it's terrible, but where is the self-esteem taking a hit? Because maybe you had your energy going in a different direction and now you're coming home to Pisces. So it's like, oh, okay, there is value for me and it takes courage right? It takes courage to say, I'm going to do this because it makes me feel good because I think it has value. It may challenge your daily routine. It may challenge that schedule. But I really think that Mars retrograde here for you says in the area of my money, in my skills that I have, my creative talents, in my possessions, right? Because the question going forward is not going to be what do you have? It's what can you do? Like, what are the skills? What are the creative talents you have to offer out? But also in your self-esteem and in how you value yourself, your time, your body, what you love and who you are. Are you being the person that you want to be? Mars in Aries wants to know that you are doing you. Okay, so this is going to be a wonderful retrograde. Of course, retrogrades are phenomenal for bringing back things from the past. So could you also be going back to something that you found valuable before? Are you paying down some bills that didn't get taken care of? Whatever it is during the Mars retrograde, you'll definitely have a chance to take care of that. On the 13th, we've got Jupiter, who is one of your ruling planets, coming out of retrograde at 18 degrees of Capricorn. Now, this is in your 11th house space. So 
Jupiter has been showing you during the retrograde, what's the wisdom? What's the value in the connection that you have in your social life? Is this something that has been strong for you? Is this something that has, um, that you've been self-disciplined enough, right? Are you showing up into your friendship groups? Are you showing up at these organizations? Are you showing up to your long range plans, goals, and designs with enough self-discipline to allow those things to happen, to participate in making those things happen? If not, Jupiter would have shown you, I think during his retrograde, where you need more training, where you maybe need more structure, where it's like, okay, we don't need to scrap the whole project. Some of these old things can stay, but we also need to bring in some new, like that changing of the guard in this particular area of your life in order for it to expand and meet the goals that you would like to meet here. On the 17th, we've got this new moon happening in the energy of Virgo. So just across the street in the seventh house area, you're planting your seeds of intention here. New relationships are possible, but they're the kind of new relationships that support you. They're significant relationships that support you in doing you, in getting where you'd like to go. These are the kind of relationships, Virgo's a natural healing earth energy, so they're gonna bring that natural earth medicine to you, right? Relationships that are, are salve for your soul at this particular time. I also feel like because Virgo is phenomenal at discernment, right? They're gonna see the facts. This is a mercurial based energy. So if you do have relationships in your life that you needed to look over the details, Right? What are the details of a contract that you're in? What are the details of this business relationship? What are the details of the relationships in your life? And do they fit? Is this the best? Right? But also, like I said, it's not just relationships. It's what you're in relation to this month, Pisces. Do you have the things that are of the highest integrity in your life? Are you in relation to them? Are you sharing a conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one energy with things that are of their greatest good for you, right? And are you showing up as a greatest good to them? But certainly this is a wonderful energy to pull in the magic of new significant relationships to help you achieve those things. On the 22nd, the sun now enters into the energy of Libra as well. So it brings light, heat, life, and vitality. Certainly could be sponsorships if that's where you're at. It's going to be an energy that is kind of collaborative, right? It's also an energy with the sun and Libra here that I think lets you say it's okay for me to let some things die off at a psychological level, at a spiritual level. I don't need these things anymore because they're not serving me. I can allow something bigger and more beautiful and a more correct and a more deep and intimate connection of relation to develop. The sun is going to have you motivated to have this area be beautiful. Now at an intimate level, this is great for some sexy time. Spend some time with your significant other. Spend some time delving into the things that you love deep down in that ushy gushy core. Spend some time on your finances. Do you need to do those taxes? Fill out that loan paperwork? Whatever it is, spend the time where you need to so you are in proper relation to the things in your life so that you are not suffering because you're not in the correct alignment of service to these things okay on the 27th mercury is going to move into the energy of scorpio lighting up the ninth house area here you become a great observer a really good learner you're able to pick up patterns you're able to get deep into information it's almost like you're an investigator of your own thoughts of your own beliefs of bigger truths right? This is publishing, marketing, broadcasting, anything that is going to have you expanding out. So what adds to your expansion this month? And allow that Scorpio energy to take you into the depth of it. Maybe this is not a month with everything so heavy on the east, where if people give you superficial answers, you're okay with that, right? You don't typically tend to be like very pushy, but with Mercury and Scorpio, it's not always the most polite energy, right? You're not always completely tactful. You might be like, no, that's not, that's, there's a deeper answer than that. And you may be expanding here to, uh, to push for that a little bit more, but it definitely brings out this ninth house 
faith, philosophy, academic education, investigator in you, and you are really in there getting these answers. I love that for you. As we close out this month on the 29th, Saturn's coming out of retrograde in the energy of Capricorn at 25 degrees. So what we're going to see is Saturn saying, hey, we've been working on this 11th house area for a couple years. Did you get it? Do you have clarity? Do you have some mastery? I would love for you to show me now that I'm out of retrograde that you have mastered some fear here, right? That we have matured. We've brought this level up. That we've brought this area of your life up another level. It's really um, a dance of mastery, crystallization, and advancement here at a spiritual level that happens to show up in a material plane. So the focus in this area, even if it's felt like there haven't been any blessings, you're like, where are my friends? Where are the social virtual blessings? Where are the blessings to my long range plans? Now that Jupiter and Saturn are out of retrograde, they do respond to the hard work that you've been putting in for sure. So you'll start to see things moving forward very slowly, albeit, but things will start to move forward in this area of your life. So what are your dreams? What are your dreams? Because now you get to come back home to Pisces, surrender to win, be of service to your own life, your own talents, your own interests, and watch this area start to unfold. I think it's really going to be really very beautiful, especially as we close out this year. I cannot wait, Pisces, to see what you have learned. I cannot wait to see how you have shifted yourself to, to make it through the energies that are going on and still participate and give that big Pisces heart and love to all of us out here in humanity. So it's going to be a beautiful month. Please keep me posted on what's happening for you. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you in the Equinox appointments and also in the Eat and Greets. Bye Pisces.